So the Swiss government is putting their foot down to those living off state handouts. The country now banning citizenship to anyone who has lived on welfare in the country in the past three years unless they pay back the money they received. The move making it impossible for asylum seekers and migrants to become citizens. Here now to weigh in, former UK Independence Party leader and Fox News contributor Nigel Farage. Nigel, thanks so much for coming on with us today. We appreciate it. Is it interesting to you to see how the mindset uh, and the reality of all of these migrants coming into Europe, how, how the mindset has changed among some of these nations? Yeah, it really is. Um, I mean, don't forget the British referendum to a very large extent was about controlling borders. Um, and, and whilst, of course, civilized countries want to try and treat genuine refugees fairly, uh, what's been happening in Switzerland and elsewhere is that the welfareism system has been a magnet, attracting people into those countries. Now, Switzerland is a very democratic country, the most democratic in Europe. It's the one place where the politicians fear the electorate because they can call a referendum on any of these issues. So we've seen this move in Switzerland, similar moves in Austria, and there are some really big fundamental changes taking place across European politics. So there are 45,804 refugees with asylum status in Switzerland. That was in 2016. Obviously, that number changes a bit year to year. But my question to you is, do you agree with this move and how do you see it playing out? Well, I do agree with the move because, you know, if somebody wants to get citizenship in a country, then I think to prove that they can speak the language, to prove that they've, in the course of the last three years, integrated and made some friends in the community, um, and to show that they're prepared uh, to pay their way. And if you like, if they've received welfare during that period, it's kind of like paying back taxes. And I think the Swiss are absolutely wholly justified in doing this, yes. Nigel, in this country, the far left, uh, who oftentimes are people that are almost embarrassed to call themselves American in a lot of cases, uh, you know, they have this view of Europe and of nations like Switzerland as the shining example of what America should hope to be someday if we ever can get there. Huh. And these are the people that have always called for open borders and call for socialistic policy. When they see Switzerland make a move like this, what does that say to them? Well, you're right. I mean, to Hillary Clinton um, and to those further left than her on the American political spectrum, they've always looked at Europe, and in particular the European Union, as you say, the shining city on the hill uh, where everything is, 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 is totally civilized. Uh, look, there is, I promise you, that the British referendum of 2016 marked a pivot point in the way in which Europe is organized. And now what you're seeing in country after country are citizens demanding of their governments they put in place reasonable measures. And I, I genuinely believe that the days of open borders, the days of really unlimited welfareism, I genuinely believe those days are coming to an end. And what's happened in Switzerland overnight is simply a symptom of that. Nigel, before we let you run, uh, President Trump canceled his uh, trip to London. What are your thoughts on that move? Very disappointed. Uh, we have, you know, an amazing business relationship between our two countries, a great military relationship, a great security relationship. Uh, we are, uh, you know, amongst the best friends of any two countries in the whole world. We have an American president who, unlike the previous one, actually likes this country, put the bust of Winston Churchill back in the Oval Office, <laughs> and he's been visiting France and Poland and Italy and Saudi Arabia and China and elsewhere, and he's still not been here. And I have to say, I find the whole thing really very disappointing. Um, he's made comments about the real estate deals that were done with regard to the old American embassy yeah. and the new one. Um, I can't comment on that. Uh, I guess he's better qualified to comment on real estate than anybody else. Um, but something else that might have been in his mind is that we have the left in this country, the Labour Party, led by Jeremy Corbyn, virtually a Marxist. We have the mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, yeah. all saying that if Trump comes, there should be massive, large-scale demonstrations and protests. And I, I wonder whether that might just be a part of his calculation that maybe at this moment in time, he doesn't need those optics. Either way, yeah. I have to say, I'm very sad about it. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't feel welcome. I think that's, that's very clear on, on, on the decision there. Nigel, yeah. thank you so much for coming on this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you.